Y'all already know what it is, Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, and we're back! Y'all wanted it, here it goes, man, when card games go wrong. Stay away from that poker table. Maybe play some spades or something in jail, little cards here and there. When it comes to putting money on the line, this is something you're going to want to avoid. Something you don't want no problems behind. It's something that you're ultimately gonna have problems behind. Y'all know I done seen it. I know I done dealt with it. Y'all know what time it is. Let's relive it. So before we get started, shout out to all the new subs. Shout out to everybody that's been with me since day one. If you just came on, this is your, you know, your first video. Welcome to the channel. This is Jay Williams. Let's live life. I want to shout out the dudes I met in Petersburg the other day that uh, recognized me from the channel, which I've had happen a bunch of times. For anybody that knows, Petersburg, if you live in Virginia, um, past few years, man, they've just been murdering out there. Petersburg is one of those places you can go and lose your life real quick. It's one of them boys walking around with a, you know, a 30 round extendo hanging out the Glocks and Dracos and I mean, it's, it's, it's got wild out Petersburg But I'm vacuuming my truck the other day I see these black dudes that keep looking at me And they're saying something But I can't hear them because of the vacuum I was in the middle of trying to schedule jobs And work and stuff So I stopped to vacuum the truck The dude was like yo you Jay And I was like yeah I'm Jay what's up I didn't know what was up You know what was going on He was like well, I told you that was Jay man You Jay from YouTube right and I was like, yeah, he's like, mama, subscribe, I'll watch. So, uh, you know, dap them up or whatnot. I appreciate y'all. You know, it's cool even to be out places like that, to run into people and know that I reach so many. So, it's much love, man. So, let's get into this when card games go bad. And on the first one, I had seen something similar on somebody's channel one time, and I was like, Damn, so this isn't uncommon what I'm about to tell y'all. This is something other people were doing as well. Now, the way we do poker or any type of gambling game in prison is the guy that runs the game brings the poker chips. Now, these ain't your round Vegas chips. Nothing like that. He's going to take a deck of cards <clears throat> and he's going to cut them up into little squares and he's going to mark each card with his certain mark, which is going to be something that he knows for a fact that makes that his poker chip. They might put numbers on them. Different colors might mean different denominations, you know, and so on and so on. And a lot of times you got to remember, guys ain't got all that money. There's some guys go out there and they play for big money. But most games, it's five cent chips, 10 cent chips, quarter chips. Things like that, you know what I mean? So you might, you raise five, 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 everybody raises five cents. You take the pot, you might come up a dollar, dollar fifty sometimes, right? My cellmate at the time, and he's still locked up, and I know he's still up to his same shit because I still talk to him. He gets the bright idea, we have to lock down, and they're going to keep the poker game going. So you just hold your chips until after count. Come back out, start the game up. And before the game starts, with some of these dudes, there's a lot of larceny, so they make you bring your money to the table. Meaning if you want $10 in poker chips, you need to bring $10 to the table. Right now, cash it in. And if you win, you can, you know, get your stuff back and then you get other stuff, right? We go in for lock. And my celly is, he's okay. You know, I think he got like $15 in chips. He's down a little bit, but he's still all right. Well, we got several decks of cards in the cell. So my celly gets his idea and says, hey, during lockdown, I'm going to sit in here and I'm going to make some poker chips. So he mimics this dude's chips. We got a red deck and a blue deck of the bicycle cards, right? So they sell a commissary. So he looks at dude's car at dude's chips. Figures out, all right, the dude's got a little slit on the side of it. He's got a number written with a black sharpie. He takes and mimics these chips perfect, right? They go back out. 
late night weekend. I don't think we locked down till like one in the morning. They're playing poker. They play all the way up to like 12.30, 12.40, right? They've been out there all day gambling. Dudes have lost their money. When they got more money, came back. And dudes lose their money. Two other dudes pull up to the table. Now, my celly is done. I'm talking. He's done made like $30, $40 worth of poker chips. And when you come to the table, like I said, you come back with the same poker chips you had when you went in your cell. You won't give them to nobody because you're not guaranteed to get the same amount back. Some dudes will let you cash your chips in, write down on a piece of paper how much money you know, you're know you owed. And when you come back out, they disperse the chips. But we just had to go in, so he still had his chips. He goes back out to the table and instead of having the small amount of money he got, now he's got like four times that. But he's got it in his shirt. You want to keep these chips out of sight because... If the officers see it, depending on the shift, they'll come out there and take all the chips. They'll come out there and shut the poker game down. Now, there's no telling how you, how much you won, how much you had. So it comes chaos. They play all night long. Come the end of the night, my homeboy not only cashes in the chips that, you know, he had actually won, but he cashes in all these chips he made also. And he tells them, oh, let me get mine first. You know what I mean? I made the most. Let me get mine first. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get back the items you put in. And a lot of dudes try to pick and choose. They'll bring a bunch of stamps to the table, but then try to leave with a bunch of cookies and stuff. Ain't how it works. So they're cashing everybody out. The bag is empty. My cellmate still got chips. This dude still got chips. This other dude still got chips because... They've already went above what was in the bag because, you know, there's so, so many more chips have been introduced to the table that he made. Dude, nah, 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 somebody cheated, somebody cheated. They're like, how somebody cheat? You passed out the chips. Like, you passed out the chips. You can't keep track of who's winning what, right? So it went from my celly making these chips so that he could skim off the poker game and win some money on top. To all these dudes thinking the dude that's running the poker game is playing games. Now nah, the bag is sitting in the cell. Y'all can see I ain't took nothing out. I ain't put nothing in. Like, it's it's sitting right there. Nah, that don't make sense, man. How is there not enough money in the bag and you passed out the chips? So you need to either come up off the money that you owe. And this is all these dudes telling this dude, we're going to beat your ass. Make a long story short, he ended up having to go to other people, borrow the money to pay all these guys in this poker game. Had that have been you running the poker game and it happened to you, you would have probably done the same thing. Because when those situations pop up, it's, all right, I'm about to take a $20 hit. I'm about to lose $20 somehow, some way. I don't understand how this happened. Or how I'm $20 short on the money I got to pay these guys. All the money should be there. I don't give them chips unless they give me the commissary. It doesn't make sense why, you know, there's more poker chips than there is money. But I got three dudes standing here ready to beat the shit out of me over these over this poker game. I got to pay it. I told you, stay away from the poker table. Because when that moment comes, it's either you're going to pay or you're going to fight. It's easier just to avoid the dumb games all together. Now, I played poker, taunt, spades, all these other games during the beginning of my bid, meaning when I first got locked up, when I first fell. When I got to prison, I played for a little while, but it wouldn't be long. I seen the larceny, dudes running game, games were rigged, so I fell back from it. But in the jail, there was nothing to do. When I mean nothing to do, there was nothing to do. You had the TVs and the pods. The one TV was for the Spanish guys, so they watched Telemundo all day. And then like all, all places, you had a sports TV. And then you just had a common TV where people just watched whatever. I wasn't big into the TV or sitting with a whole bunch of guys watching TV at the time. So I would play spades. Either spades or tunk every single day. And we gamble for spades. Now I had a dude in there. Like I can't remember this dude's name. It was a soft ass white dude. 
I didn't know he was soft. He didn't come across as soft. But I'll get into how I found out he was soft. Me and this dude didn't hang out in the pod. We might conversate here and there out of boredom. But he wasn't my dude. We didn't just kick it all the time. But anytime I played spades, dude was a beast with the spades. You know what I mean? He wouldn't he wouldn't cut me. He wouldn't undercut me. He wouldn't overbid. He knew how to bid his hand. For y'all to play spades, y'all know what I'm talking about. We would sit down and play, and we was pretty good at what we did. We usually always won money. <coughs> dudes will lose their money, and other dudes will come to the table. Or I get on like, hey, anybody trying to anybody trying to lose your money, man? We got a spade game. Anybody trying to get in? And you're going to bait people. They're going to come over to the spade game. These two dudes sit down. And the one guy I just did not like. I had seen him play cards with people before. Get to fighting behind and start running his mouth. He get real hype. Be slamming the cards all extra. Doing the most. Running around the room. Screaming in the day room. Just acting a fool, right? So when he came to the table, I'm like, oh, shit, man, we're playing with this dude. I don't even like this dude. But whatever, his money's like everybody else's money. Tell my partner, I'm like, you ready to go? He was like, yeah, let, let's do this. So we get the game underway. Keep the score. We're going, we're going, we're going. About an hour has passed now, and these boys realize they just, you know, they're not on our level. There's nothing they can do when it comes to these spades. We're going to kill y'all every time. I'm either going to pull all the cards out your hands with my spades or run these hearts down your throat after I've taken your spades. This is spade talk now, right? We play, I guess we play about five, six hands, six different games, and we're just taking the money left and right. And the dude I play with, he likes to get a little hype too. He, boom, slamming them cards. Boom, slamming them cards. Boom, slamming them cards on the table. Pulling all the spades out their hands, right? With a, it's a black dude named Carrie sitting to my right. Light-skinned, bigger dude sitting there. And he's got some dude that was a nobody that's supposed to be good at spades playing with him, right? So we get to the fifth or sixth game. And we're dead middle of playing spades. And I can see it on the dude's Carrie face that he just... Looks like he just ate a whole entire shit sandwich with peanuts and corn in it. Dude's face just balled up. You know what I mean? Like like he farted and they got stuck in his shirt. And that's all he can smell. He's just sitting there with a stink face. Meanwhile, dude I'm playing spades with, bong, still slamming the cards on the table, right? We're almost at the end of the game. And the dude Carrie is sitting there quiet. And he leans back in his chair. And he's looking at his partner. And he looks at me. And he looks at the dude I'm playing spades with. Sits forward a little bit, stands up, and flips the whole table over. Cards go everywhere. Coffee goes everywhere. None of the shit hit me. You know what I mean? More or less, it went towards his partner that was sitting across from him. But everybody in there just seen this shit. I was expecting my space partner to take off on him because he was sitting closest to him. And this dude I was playing space with, it, you know, the white dude, had a lot of mouth with him. He would always... Be talking loud how he does this. He'll knock somebody out. I hadn't seen it yet. I'd already been, I think, in like two, three fights by this point. So I didn't know if he would, but I thought he would because he talked a good game. That's when I learned. You don't listen to what people say. Actions, you know, speak louder than words. So I'm kind of, I'm still sitting in my chair. And I'm in disbelief. Like, my brain's trying to register. He ain't really just flipped this table over. That's what my brain is telling my emotions, like, he didn't just flip this table over. This table ain't flipped over. These cards ain't on the ground. That coffee ain't everywhere. He did not just do what I saw him did. Please let my brain be messing with me, because this ain't fact. And I look over at my partner, my partner's sitting there like, like, he don't know what to do. Like, oh, man, this dude just spazzed out. I look over the other dude that dude is playing spades with. He's sitting there, you know, like, Coffee all over him, pissed off. I stand up and I shove carry. Like, as hard as I can. Not a, a shove, but a check. Like just boom, hit him with my hands as hard as I can into his chest, right? So he, what's up, what's up? Tries to get all hype in front of everybody. 
His feelings are hurt because we done beat him at spades all these games. We done taken his money. My partner's making him look stupid. So he's in his feelings. So he flipped the table. He's like, what's up, what's up? So I, hey, and at the time, my staircase was situated, my cell was situated underneath the staircase at Riverside, right where the phone is. And there's a guard right there. But for the most part, you can slide in there and get your thing off, shut the door, and they'll never know you're fighting. He's trying to fight in the middle of the pod. And I'm like, nah, man, I just got out the whole, nah, I'm not crashing. Come over here. So I go to my cell and I, I back up in there and I'm like, come on. He's talking shit the whole way there. Blah, blah, blah. You know how dudes do just talking, talking, talking. I'm not talking. I'm in my feelings. You flip this table. So I back up in my cell. He comes to the door. When he gets to the door, I square up with him real quick. And the first thing he says out of his mouth, yo, my bad, man. I'm dead wrong. And I'm not trying to hit it. You know what I mean? I'm still hyped up. Come on, come on. I'm dead wrong, man. I'm sorry, man. But he's not saying it loud enough so that everybody else can hear it. He's copping deuces, copping please, trying to apologize out of earshot of everybody else and saying it quietly, right? So he's, come on, man. I just lost my temper, man. I ain't really trying to fight, man. I ain't with all that fighting shit, man. I just, I got angry, man. You know, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. So something that's real common that we would do in the jail is if you got somebody standing there talking and they didn't cause a scene and they need their ass beat and they won't go in a cell, we'll have one of our other homeboys or somebody else that ain't, that ain't got to be anybody involved will walk up behind you while you're standing at that door trying to plead your case and just shove you into the cell, right? Dude has nothing to do with anything going on, walks up, walks past dude like he's going to the phone and attempts to shove him and when he goes to shove him, dude says, C.O., C.O., they trying to bang me. They trying to bang me. And starts yelling for the guard. You got a guard standing there at the at the desk, and you got one behind the guard. We had a big young boy named Sampler at the time was, was the guard in a fire building. He comes, boom, running over, you know what I mean, all big G.I. Joe action figure looking ass. Dude does exactly what they always do. He can't stay in here no more because regardless of all that apologizing and stuff, you disrespected me in front of everybody. You messed the whole space game up. I don't know if you just got it. You had a temper tantrum moment. You had a hissy fit. What happened? But dude ended up rolling this stuff out, telling Sampler, look, I don't feel safe in here. I can't be in here no more. But he tried to make it seem like he was a gorilla. Oh, you got to get me out of here or I'm going to run my time up. I'm going to hurt one of these dudes. You got to put me in another pod to make sure I don't hurt one of them. I ain't never see the dude again, but if you ever see this and you all watching, that was some bitch shit. We could have fought, could have been over. Shit, you could have picked the cards up after the fight. We could have went right back to playing spades. I probably would have never played spades with you again. But that was some bitch shit. If you got out, now I think about it, I think dude had a lot of time. But if you're out and you're watching this, you, sir, get the bitch of the day card for what you did on that day. So this was part one. There's too many poker table, you know, stories, spades stories, pinochle stories. To put into one video and I want to get this out to y'all in a good amount of time without it taking all day. YouTube is on that dumb shit again. Demonetizing videos and then coming back three days later and monetizing them because they don't even review them. Taking hours and hours and hours and hours for my video to upload so it doesn't get to y'all when it should so it falls in a different time area. You know, messes with the analytics and views. They're not stupid, man. They've been doing this a long time. But this was just two of God knows how many stories took place, man. If y'all want to hear more about these poker games, games in general, I have told y'all, you know, it always goes bad. Let me know in the comments section. I'll gladly give y'all a part two, part three, do part ten if that's what y'all want to do. I've seen this too many times, man. Stay away from the poker game. Stay away from the poker table.
Do not play cards. Or play softball. Basketball if you're built like that and you can take an elbow to the face and not want to fight. But stay away from the cards. Take my advice. Stay away from the cards. If you're going to play, play with friends. Don't play with random dudes. It always ends bad. Y'all see we got Toronto in the house today. But anyway... These institutions, detention centers, jails, facilities, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life to all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do, man. Salute.